All right, fellas. Now with the announcement of the first ever Amazon Prime card, I've seen a lot of you all say one of two things. Either, who's Tim Zhu? Or why does he deserve to be headlining an event like this? For anyone who doesn't know who he is, I gotta say, you've been missing out. With the record of 24-0 and holding the WBO World Super Welterweight World title, he's been a force for many years. Being an Australian myself, I can just testify to how big of a name Zoo's been over here, selling out arenas for years and years. Like come on, you don't see this kind of walk out in the States much, do you? He does deserve the praise he has, fighting exciting fights and the best fighters available. He's genuinely the closest to a throwback fighter you can really get in modern boxing. Born in Australia, Tim is one of the sons of world champion Costa Zhu, who had some massive wins against fighters such as Julio Cesar Chavez, Shamba Mitchell twice, and an undisputed title win against Zab Judah. Growing up around boxing and his family owning the Zoo Boxing Academy, it was only a matter of time till he became a boxer himself. In the amateurs, he had a record of 33-1 before turning pro in 2016 at 22. In his rise to the big fights, he blazed through a number of competitive Australian names, with some notable names being Wade Ryan, Joel Camilleri, Dwight Ritchie, and Jeff Brubaker, clearing out most of the Australian welterweight division. The fight which really put him on the map nationally was his fight with Jeff Horn. Jeff Horn was already a big name after his controversial win against Manny Pacquiao. In the fight, Tim barely broke a sweat. A complete demolition of Horn occurred over 8 rounds, with Horn refusing to start the ninth with the towel being thrown in. The fight put him on the map for Australians and introduced him to an international audience. Following this win, fights against good quality Australian opponents such as Morgan, Hogan and Stevie Spark all helped to build his newfound reputation, scoring a TKO in each of these fights. By this point, there were complaints that he wasn't testing himself enough against international competition. In response, he challenged Takeshi Inoue, a Japanese fighter with a 17-1 record. Ranked number 6 by the WBO, Inoue was no slouch. This was easily Zhu's toughest fight to date. The fight went to full 12 and was a technical display which would send a warning to all other challengers in the 154 pound division. After this solid display against Inoue, he flew over to America to headline his first ever US Showtime show against Terrell Gaucher. The fight was trouble for Zhu. In the weeks before the fight, he caught the flu, which plagued him into fight week, putting his preparation massively behind where it really should be. Against hometown fighter Terrell Gaucher, this fight was always going to be interesting. Gaucher was a former Olympian, with a record of 22-2. When the fight started, straight off the bat, Zhu was knocked down in the first round. However, it didn't seem to phase Zhu. He followed this up with an otherwise dominant decision win. Yet as said by former world champions such as Jeff Fennick, the 114-113 scorecard was absurd and Zhu was almost robbed. Around this time, Zhu was a mandatory for Jamel Charlo and was really pushing for the fight, which should have been really easy to make because Charlo was also a PBC fighter. The fight was then made for the 28th of January, yet was then called off because Charlo apparently broke his hand in two separate places. Not wanting to wait, Zhu decided to pick up another fight. His next fight came against Tony Harrison, who was well known for being a former world champion and being the only fighter to defeat Jamel Charlo. This fight was for the WBO interim world title, and was just another dominant Zhu display, with Zhu being in control for the whole fight. He eventually dropped Harrison in the ninth with a series of absolutely savage blows to the body and head. Following putting Tony to sleep, he once again called out Charlo. Zhu was committed to staying active, so to continue this run, he decided to go against Carlos Ocampo, who was a strong challenger, having a record of 23-2 before the Zhu fight. Ocampo was a strong Mexican fighter, yet looked like a deer in headlights against Zhu, being knocked out a minute and 17 seconds into the first round. The fight seemed like the final fight before Zhu would finally face Charlo. Charlo, instead of this, decided to take a big money fight against Canelo Alvarez. This put Zhu in limbo. Not wanting to wait, he decided to fight Brian Mendoza, who was fresh off an upset win against Sebastian Fandora. In this fight, Zhu applied non-stop pressure and broke Mendoza down, round after round. Zhu rocked Mendoza multiple times, yet somehow Mendoza stayed on his feet the entire fight with Zhu winning a pretty easy decision, with making mainly smooth sailing of it after round 5. And now that brings us to the modern day. Zhu is set to fight Keith Thurman on the first ever Amazon Prime card at the T-Mobile Arena. Zhu, other than the location, has everything on his side. Thurman, although a legend in his own right, hasn't fought since 2022 against Barrios, before that hasn't fought since 2019. 
I would expect significant fireworks coming to this fight, with Thurman already doing a good job in promoting and getting a reaction out of a usually calm zoo. No flat-footed Mexicans were born in Australia, zoo! <laughs> you wait. Mexican you wait. zoo! What you gonna do? I got a Mexican style. Mexican oh, zoo! What you gonna I a, do? I got a Mexican style, but Mexican styles are the, one of the greatest styles in the world, so don't be disrespecting Mexican styles. I ain't and lost to no I, Mexican. Do your I research. Do. Watch more tape. Don't be running. Watch more tape if you want a debate. Don't be, don't be running. I have not lost to no flat footed, don't, slow don't be running Mexicans. Like if Zoo manages to get through Thurman, he opens himself up to the US market. There are already talks of Zoo fighting either Crawford or Errol Spence, but ideally, he would probably want to unify finally with Charlo. But Charlo could potentially just keep running. Either way, we'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on how you think the Thurman fight might go. Zoo very much has the potential to be a great, and it's already a huge problem at 154, but only time will tell.